ladies, my frameless media. Today we are discussing BMF season three, episode one, Detroit versus everybody. Now in this episode, we get a glimpse into the future of BMF where we see an older version of Meech and uh, Terry. Now we only get to see maybe 10 seconds of them talking and they're pretty much at odds. Terry's blaming Meech for the downfall by saying that he was being too flashy, which caught the attention of the police. Whereas Meech is saying, no, we got into this because you were running your mouth and they now have you on these wiretaps. But in my honest opinion, both of them working together is when things are good. It's really when they are against each other and when they're separated from each other is when things are bad. And we see this in the opening uh, episode where Terry is now in Detroit trying to run things while Meech is trying to set up shop in Atlanta. Now, in Detroit, we are picking up where we left off. Terry and Markeisha were out and about when they were ambushed. And as a result, Terry makes it out okay, but Markeisha is the one that suffers the most. She ends up with a gunshot wound that puts her in critical condition at the hospital. Word gets out around town and everyone thinks that Terry was shot. We have the family rushing to the hospital only to find out that it's the side chick that's suffering. And Lucille is looking at Terry like, you are just like your father. Whereas Wanda, she's there and she is standing on business. I give her props for this episode because she stood up for herself. And she lets Terry know, you really wouldn't be in this situation if you weren't messing around with a married woman. This is nothing but retaliation coming from her husband. And Terry knows it. Now that the truth is out there, you know, Terry's not really trying to listen to anybody. He is in love with Markeisha and he would do anything to protect her. Even the BMF members are trying to talk to him and it's getting to the point where they start to reach out to Meech out of concern because they feel like Terry is not focused anymore. He's too wrapped up with Markeisha that they are not getting business done. And of course, Meech has to reach out to Terry and let him know you need to start back getting focused. You know, you're supposed to be in charge. I can't run Detroit and Atlanta at the same time. That's why I left you there. Terry agrees to try to get back focused again. He apologizes to the team, but he does let it be known that he has to send a message so that the streets don't see him as some type of weak link. Now, he basically gets his best shooter to have all eyes on Saint. Saint is the one that ambushed them. Now, yes, the shooter does what he is told to do, but Meech gives also additional orders to the shooter that he must do the one. He must take out Saint. It can't be Terry. Okay, Terry can't get his hands dirty. Now, Terry does find out what happens, and they basically come to an agreement that they will keep it, you know, keep this a secret, that, you know, let the streets think what they want to think. If they want to think that Terry did the shooting, then that's fine, but... Again, this is all to make him look good, okay? Meanwhile, Lucille and Charles, they have their own problems, and we pick up where we left off with them, and Lucille has been contemplating over and over again on the state of her marriage, and she's come to the realization that she wants a divorce. And like always, Charles, almost in every episode, he is constantly reminding Lucille that they are broke, okay? We don't have the time, and we definitely don't have the money. But that does not stop Lucille from moving forward with, with this decision that she's made. And we see that later, Terry pretty much decides to move out because he wants to spend his life with Markeisha. And this is the thing that pissed me off in this episode. Terry is going all out for the side chick. Why is your baby mama, your firstborn son, and she, you know, your baby mama's already pregnant with another child. Why are they still living at your parents' house? Like, if you're going to take care of the side chick, you need to also take care of your baby mama and your kids. You're doing more for the side chick and her children than you are for your own. You know, it makes no sense. And that's what was pissing Wanda off. Like, you know, that's fine. Love who you want to love. But like, you're, you're kicking them to the curb like they're trash, which is not fair. And like I said, you know, Terry's moving out, so that means there's an open room. And Lucille lets Charles know, hey, Charles, your room is ready, okay? Because <laughs> one way or another, we are separating. We are not going to be together. Whether or not I get the divorce, you cannot be laid up with me, okay? Meanwhile, we do see the detective and his son, Kevin. 
Um, they're having words. Uh, the detective is very worried about his son because he is now going to juvie. If you guys remember back in season two, he was being bullied and it got to the point where he got his hands on the guns and he took the bully's life. And now he's in trouble. Now, they were trying to try him as an adult, but he took a plea deal. They got to reduce down to juvie. And from the looks of it, I just don't see Kevin making it at juvie. He's too nice. He's just a kid that loves comic books. And unfortunately, he made a bad decision. Now, the detective is not taking responsibility for his actions because this whole time, he's still mad at Terry and Meech. You know, he's looking at them like they're the bad guys, but they over here throwing parties and kicking it while my son is over here locked up. And I, I don't understand his thought process here. I get it. Maybe there's a little bit of jealousy here, but you can't blame Terry and Meech for something that your son did, you know? Moving on, we're now down into Atlanta. And uh, like I said, Meech is trying to set up shop. Now, he's always used to kind of talking the talk, flexing, throwing money around, making a lot of promises. You know, it seemed like it was working a little bit until we see towards the end. He now has to regroup. He needs to strategize here because now Atlanta's more territorial. You know, they don't take too fond of outsiders coming in trying to, you know, rub elbows with them. He was trying to, you know, get in with the MKs and Glock. The MKs see you as a threat. Glock wouldn't even look or even talk to them when they tried to approach, you know, Glock with a meeting. He was met with, uh, with some defense. And in the end, Remy, we see Remy is very territorial. He's with the uh, Techwood boys. He's not willing to rub elbows with BMF. And he quickly reminds Meech, um, you're not wanted here. OK, so and that's where the title comes from, Detroit versus everybody, because now you got to rethink your game plan. So the way you've been moving in Detroit is not the same. You're going to have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better plan. Now, this episode overall, I got to say, was great. I'm looking forward to the season. I give it a nine out of ten. We did get to see a little bit of acting from Neo and 2 Chains. Now, I am a little bit upset <laughs> at the fact that they put a wig on Neo, but it is what it is. He's playing a character, and 2 Chains' character stacks. I'm not too sure if I'm sold on him just yet because he came out very suspicious, so I'm not sure if we need to watch our backs with this character because I don't know if he's trustworthy just yet. And also, the only issue I had with the writing in this episode was the scene with Markeisha. She does leave the hospital, and Terry promises, you know, hey, I done got us a house and whatnot. But the thing is, he really didn't have a place for Markeisha to go except for to his parents' house to hide out until he figures something out. I don't get why the writers put that because it makes no sense. Terry has all this money. You're telling me your homeboys come put her up in a hotel. They couldn't find anywhere else in Detroit besides your parents' place. And not only that, but how do you know Boom and his crew? Most people already know uh, Lucille and Charles. They know where they live. You don't think that they would come to try and attack them or try, or try to do something to them, but instead you felt like that was the safe place? You know, so I'm just saying, like, I get what the writers are doing. They're trying to set up, you know, a storyline there, but it didn't really make sense, especially with Terry's status. But anywho, 9 out of 10. Definitely um, we'll be tuning in for more episodes, but leave a comment. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys for another review. Bye.